What do you do if you don't want to shake hands? Perhaps you have a cold or it's flu season and you don't want to get sick, but you don't want to dismiss that other person. You want to be respectful and honoring of them. So what do you do instead of shaking hands? Well, this video is about a particular ritual that you can use to replace a handshake that still has some of the benefits that a handshake has. Let me explain that a handshake is equal to, according to the research, three hours of continuous face-to-face -face interaction and its ability to establish rapport. Let me break that down. That means when you shake hands with somebody, the, the physical placement in space and specifically the touch in that um, handshake, palm-to-palm -palm contact, actually has a physiological and psychological effect on you and the other person that bonds you and makes you feel a level of trust and comfort and safety that you don't get when you don't shake hands. So if you don't want to actually do the palm to palm handshake, what can you do instead? And that's the handshake replacement ritual. Now, let me explain how you start it because normally when you go to shake hands, you are moving the right side of your body, your shoulder and your right arm forward and your right foot is stepping forward. So you don't want to do that because the minute you move your right foot, your right shoulder and your right arm in any kind of forward mo motion to another person, you're going to create a response in them that has an expectation of you shaking hands. So you don't want to go there. Instead, if you're sneezing into a handkerchief, as you greet them or they're blowing their nose as they greet you, you want to move the left side of your body. So you're going to step forward on your left foot. That will make the whole left side of your body go forward. Well, that breaks expectation of a handshake. So you're already at an advantage. So you're not going to break their expectation. So you move forward on your left. You reach out your left hand and arm. Now, as you're reaching out your left hand and arm, you're doing so um, in an effort to get in intimate zone of space. That's a natural placement for good interpersonal interaction. So it gives you an excuse to get into intimate zone of space without having to shake hands. The next step is to touch them in what I call the safe zone. So the safe zone is elbow to fingertips. That area of the body on both men and women is a non-sexual part of the body. It's not a threatening part of the body. So if you touch in the safe zone very briefly with your left hand, very briefly, let me emphasize, you are still getting some of the benefits of, of touch that you would otherwise get in the handshake. And it's that stimulation of the nerve endings in the skin um, that creates this wonderful cascade of chemicals that give you a lot of the benefits of, of bonding and a feeling of rapport. So, you reach out with your left hand, you touch lightly and very, very briefly. In fact, the research shows that even a 40th of a second, a fraction of a second of touch in that safe zone creates wonderful chemical responses and a lot of the positive benefits of touch without being threatening at all. By the way, you don't linger in the intimate zone of space. Just like in a handshake, you shake hands and then you ease back or step back. You're going to do the same thing with this handshake replacement. So you touch very briefly and then you retreat back. If you're hearing this, oh my God, there's no way I'm going to touch this person. Remember, you do touch during a handshake. It's just slightly different in how much is touching, where you're touching. So it's not that different. If you still think, Patty, there's no way I'm going to do this touch, I'm going to give you another fallback replacement for the handshake. And that is step forward on your left foot, reach out your hand, but you're going to symbolically touch. You're not going to actually put your hand all the way onto the skin and make contact. You're just going to reach out as if you are going to touch. And as you do that, you do your normal greeting. Hello, how are you? So. What that creates is, again, a lot of the same facial expressions, a lot of the same forward motion, a lot of the same getting into intimate zone of touch uh, and interpersonal communication zone 
that you would get from the handshake, but you're actually not making physical contact. Not going to get some of the same benefits as you would if you actually touched, but if that makes you feel safer and you think, hey, I could do that, that seems reasonable, do that instead. What I don't recommend is not doing anything. I, I don't recommend stepping away as soon as you see somebody that pulls out a Kleenex. I don't recommend starting to go shake hands and then stepping back. Uh, you're losing out on so many of the very primal necessary behaviors that make you appear safe to another person and allow them to feel comfortable and safe in your presence. And if you don't have a normal close social interaction at the beginning of any meeting, even with people you know, it takes so much longer to feel comfortable. So you end up wasting an enormous amount of time. Think about that. Think about what a waste of time it is if you don't actually spend that little moment, that little bit of effort greeting in a warm way. So now you've learned a handshake replacement ritual. I'd like you to go out into the world and try it and let me know how it goes.